Hey everybody, I am Howard and this is Adder's Retirement Corner. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about uh, his, his obsession with playing uh, blackjack in casinos and it got me thinking, are casinos good for retirees? Um, he's got hundreds of millions of dollars, so I'm going to throw him out of the study. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is throw out this question at you. Give me your answer in the comments. Next video, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my answer. You're, you're playing blackjack. You, you've got a 10 and a 6. You have 16, and the dealer's showing a 10. What do you do? Simple. Just tell me what your answer is. We'll talk about it next time. All right, so here, here's my story. I, I, used, I used to gamble a lot. Um, living in Illinois, there were, there were several casinos. They were required to be on water. So they'd have them on these boats that would never move. They were required to start their engines once a day, but they would, they would never go anywhere. So why boats? I don't know. Uh, anyway, I, 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 frequented, I frequented the Queen Victoria Casino in Elgin, Illinois, and there was a period of maybe a year or more where I was probably there every two or three days playing mostly blackjack. And... Let's talk about casinos and, and what your odds are here. Every single game at a casino, the casino has the advantage. The more you play, the more money you play, the longer you play, the more you're going to lose. That over time, those numbers are against you. For short periods of time or one visit or two visits, you can win, but it's called regression to the mean. Over time, you will lose money. The worst odds... Uh, and it's debatable because there's different rules in different casinos, but you can, you can basically look at slots as the biggest money makers for casinos. Most of them are targeted to 93% um, win ratio or a 7% loss ratio, Let me, it, which, which is a better explanation. Over time, you're going to lose 7% of your money. So whether you're betting nickels or dimes or quarters or dollars or 10 or 50, whatever it is, over time, you're going to lose 7% of that money. There's going to be people, people who win great big jackpots. That happens, all right? So anyway, I, I, I played blackjack because it's the game where the house has the smallest advantage. Again, depending upon their payout rules uh, and their play rules, it, it may be 1%. It may be slightly more, slightly less. Now, it's the one game that the player can switch the advantage to themselves and that's by counting cards. And I learned to count cards, and it, become, it became a second nature thing to me. I could sit at a, casino, uh, at a blackjack table for hours on end, talking to people, six deck shoe, uh, counting cards. And it, it's still hard to win. Um, you know, they had me as one of their top 5% of players, meaning I bet money equal to the top 5% of players. Not that I bet a lot. I bet, you know, 10, 15, 25 bucks a hand, but over six, eight hours, several days a week. And they, you know, they stand there and it's called rating your play and they take notes. You give them your card and who you are. And, you know, I have free buffets for the rest of my life because I played that much. And the only reason I played beyond uh, my love of gambling is there was no smoking there. <laughs> Now, I love the numbers, I love the, the statistics, I love figuring out how to beat the house, and the only reason I went there was because there's no smoking. In, in Illinois, uh, now there's no smoking. At that time, there was smoking, but that particular casino had a, a lower deck and I could play there with no smoking. Once they took that away, I quit playing. Um, and that was it. So I, I kind of knew I didn't have a gambling problem because the idea of sitting in a smoke-filled room was more disgusting to me than, you know, any addiction I might have had. So I, I haven't played much, you know, other than one or two times in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, so, you know, I read a lot, I studied a lot, I learned the games, and I stayed away from them all except blackjack. Now, the one exception to that was when uh, Texas Hold'em poker became a big deal. Um, most of the casinos, including the one I went to, you know, cleared away some games and made room for those tables. You know, they take what's called a rake. They take money out of every hand. It might be $8. You know, it might be a, a larger amount on the bigger uh, limit tables. And they didn't care who won or lost. They took their percentage. 
the, the difference is you're not playing against the house, you're playing against the other people there. And in the early days of casinos having it, uh, having the, the poker in there, it was easy money. I, I made a lot of money off a lot of other people, not playing a lot. You know, I'd go in there, would start with 200 bucks and come out with three, four, five, six, seven hundred bucks, whatever it was. I did enter a World Series of Poker tournament, uh, satellite tournament in Gary, in, not Gary, somewhere in Indiana. Um, finished 17th out of 1,500 people, won about $3,000. And, you know, it, it was fun. <laughs> I loved it, uh, but never did it again. So now let's talk about, in general, elderly people, retired people, older people. These all have different uh, definitions. There, uh, I looked at a National Institutes of Health 2019 study, which was a study of 51 other studies. And interestingly enough, there's very few studies, especially in the U.S., about senior, elderly, retiree gambling. So there's not a lot of information. There's, a, there's the studies they looked at, they found a lot of biases, um, which, you know, invalidate the studies to an extent. But here, here's the kind of things I found. And, and again, my anecdotal experience is when I went to casinos, most of the older people, the retirees played slots. And I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Um, they got bussed in uh, wherever they were coming from. <laughs> Buses would drop them off. They'd lose their money and they'd leave. Occasionally someone would win a big jackpot, you know, and that would keep them going. So this, this National Institutes of Health, the NIH study, um, and when I say elderly, uh, the age is very based upon what study was done. So when I say elderly, this could be 55 to, you know, 100. So... Take that with a grain of salt. Um, gambling among the older or elderly over the last couple of decades has increased very significantly. Um, they found that problem gambling exists for about 10% of the people over 55. They don't necessarily define what problem gambling is, but you know, take that to mean what you think it would mean for you. Now, there's very few focus studies on just the elderly. They would do studies over the population and then, you know, slice out the elderly. So, not again, not a lot of great studies. Now, they found that um, women over 60 are more at risk than men, especially over 65, to have gambling problems. And again, the bias is there. It could be that there's more women gambling. Um, you know, they may be divorced. They live longer. They're older. Uh, live, you know, live to a, a, an older age, so more likely to gamble. Um, you know, again, take that to mean what you want. Um, problem gambling is highly correlated with chronic medical problems. So again, correlation is not causation. It could be the other way around. People who are very sick or know they don't have long may be willing to gamble their money away more quickly or more often. Um, again, you have to sort of look at, you know, the word correlation versus co causation. Um, it also correlates to other addictive behaviors. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Um, so the study also showed that uh, casinos were starting to, you know, take advantage of this, of course. That's how they make money. They, they program slot machines, which is what, you know, the studies show the elderly, the older people, the retirees most, most often play. And they, they programmed them to have more near misses so that it gave people the impression they were getting better at the game and they were getting closer to bigger jackpots and they would play more and they would play more money and, of course, they would lose more. Um, you know, understand casinos are there to take your money, all right? <laughs> there's, there's no other way around it. They're not there to give you a chance to make money. They're there to take your money. Um... So 80% of the older or the elderly uh, were there looking for entertainment. That, that was their, their reason for playing. 38% were combating loneliness. And, and this might be the overriding factor of why a lot of people play, even though they say it's 38%. There, there may be many people who, you know, from senior living facilities, assisted living facilities, 
they'll take buses of people over the casinos and they know you know people that may be susceptible to problem gambling and losing money but they also know it has a a very strong beneficial effect of getting people out talking to other people being around other people socializing which is great for their mental health it's also good for their physical health so you have to look at both sides of this um, now about 40 percent of all casino users are over 65. so you go into most casinos you're going to see a high proportion of, of older people playing uh, again that's partially because they have time especially if they're retired um, <laughs> using bus tours were associated with increased risk of problem gambling you know there's a shock uh, women over 75 are most obsessed most susceptible to bus tours so you know they're again they live longer they're they live longer alone uh, you know because the husbands die earlier or they've been divorced for a long time um you know they're, they're more willing to go and, and looking for that social connection um again there are a lot of uh, selection and cultural biases found in these studies so you know the bottom line here is gamble if you enjoy it uh, you know, unless you think you have a problem, then don't, you know, you know call that number, you know, the 800 number, or Gamblers Anonymous or whatever, but stay away from casinos. And, and it's hard to do. It's simple to say. It's hard to do. I understand that. Um, a lot of you don't have enough money to go gamble, and that might be a good thing. Um, you know, but there's always those little nickel or quarter slots. I don't know what they are anymore. Um, so, again, the bottom line here is, is be careful. Know what you're doing. You know, study the odds. Um, tell me in the comments, you know, do you gamble? Do you go to casinos? What do you like to play? What are your thoughts on this? What do you see? What do you think about, you know, the elderly or senior citizens, you know, going and blowing their social security checks there? Uh, tell me what your experiences are. That's, that's what I'm interested in, in, in hearing. And, you know, are, are you, is it a positive thing to you or is it a negative thing? That's what I'm trying to get a handle on here. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm reading both sides of it. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. Comment, comment, comment. Give me your questions and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.